Greetings, welcome, and thank you for clicking. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing Company, supporting your journey with healing experiences, coaching, and encouragement for life's changes, challenges, and transitions. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Ask the Stones, offering spiritual guidance and encouragement for life's challenging questions. Welcome to this episode of Ask the Stones. This week's question is from Patty. I need advice on parenting teens. Mine don't clean up, complain, and are rude. I am so sick of being around them. Oh, Patty. I am sorry for this experience. I can hear the anger in your question. I can hear the fatigue. And so I want to say that I am sorry for this. I also want to say, Patty, that parenting children is a challenge. Now, of course, I am not a parent. Um, I have never parented children. Um, but I am well aware that um, children and teenagers uh, are a challenge, but so too are any of us. And so I think, Patty, with this question, and I think everyone, that we can actually substitute teens for something else, like a spouse or a parent or a friend or coworker or boss. So I think, Patty, that um, your challenge isn't unique to uh, parenting teens. So I could say, um, my spouse doesn't clean up. Uh, my spouse complains. My spouse is rude. Or uh, let's see here, my parents don't clean up. My parents complain. My parents are rude. Or even coworker or boss. My coworkers and boss don't clean up. They complain. They are rude. I am so sick of being around them. Wow. So, Patty, thank you for this question. And I think that this question reveals a feeling that we have all had at times in our lives, being tired of being around certain people and uh, just being kind of fed up with their behavior. So, Patty, thank you for this great question. You know, Patty, my assumption is, I'm going to make some assumptions here, so I apologize if I am assuming incorrectly. My assumption is that you love your kids, that these teens are pains in the butt, and that you do indeed love them. I'm also, Patty, going to assume that even though these teens are pains in the butt, you wish that this were not the case. So in other words, you really would love to have a different kind of relationship with them and be able to um, uh, tolerate them, you know, just to have the, the ability to, to be around them. So I'm going to make those assumptions, Patty, that you do love your children and that you do want to spend time with them, get to know them, and have a different relationship with them. So, Patty, what are my thoughts? Well, I first, Patty, want to say that there is no judgment for this feeling. So, if any of us are feeling judgy on Patty, um, I want to encourage us to recognize that, yes, we could substitute all kinds of things in here for teenagers. And that we have all been at this place at one point and another in our lives. And you may be thinking, yes, Christian, but these are children. And Patty should not be so upset and sick about being around her children. Well, let me first say that even though I have not parented children, including teens, I can imagine that there are times when you are just sick of being around them. 
And I can imagine that there are times when you actually might even wish you didn't have them. So I don't have any judgment, Patty, on your feelings towards your children at this time. And I want to encourage us to release judgment of Patty. And Patty, I want to encourage you to release judgment of yourself. You know, sometimes when we get to this level of feeling disgusted, I mean, this is disgust, and disgust is a very strong, powerful emotion. Uh, and so when we get to this place of disgust, we can sometimes feel judgmental of ourselves for that very feeling. And so, Patty, I want to encourage you to even not feel so judgmental of yourself for, um, for feeling these very strong feelings about your relationship with your kids right now. And Patty, I am going to say with your relationship with your kids rather than rather than saying with your kids themselves. Because the truth is, Patty, that someone else could be looking at their behavior and think, gosh, these kids are so clean. I can't believe how clean these kids are. And gosh, these kids are so, um, have such a positive attitude. And wow, I, they're so polite. You know, Patty, so perception is everything. And so while you may be feeling that these, these ways about your kids, that they complain, they're rude, um, someone else may not have those feelings about your kids and someone else may not have those feelings about your kids if they were the parent. So rather than talking about this behavior of your kids, I really want to focus in on the relationship that you have with your kids because, again, someone else in your exact same situation might have a different opinion of your kids' behavior. And, um, you know, Patty, maybe what's really at the root of it is not so much the kids' behavior itself, but rather your relationship with your kids, the way that you relate to them, uh, and your feelings about their behavior. So I really, you know, because Patty, if, if this was the kind of thing where you didn't have a problem with their behavior, then you wouldn't be asking the question, right? Then you wouldn't feel these feelings about these particular behaviors. I do want to encourage you, Patty, to center in on the particular behaviors themselves. So what exactly is it that is aggravating you? What exactly is it that is making you sick? Because um, they don't clean up, they don't complain, they are rude. But that can look like a million different things. So not cleaning up can be something, something as simple as leaving your socks on the floor. Or it could be something like not doing the dishes or not putting your dishes in the dishwasher, or it could mean their room is a mess. So not cleaning up could be a million different things. Same thing with their complaining. What exactly does that mean to you? What exactly are you referring to when you're talking about this behavior? And their rudeness as well. I mean, rudeness can be anything from uh, chewing gum with your mouth open to um, swearing in the street. Again, someone else might not think that those behaviors are rude. So it's very important for you, Patty, to define exactly what you mean when you refer to these behaviors. So exactly what is it that annoys you? What are the specific behaviors that give you these feelings of not wanting to be around your kids? Which absolutely must be frustrating because, again, I'm assuming that you love your kids and that you would like to spend time with them and that you would like to be around them. So, Patty, first recommendation for you is to define these behaviors and not necessarily to define them in order to make them change, but to define them to get at what it is that is really annoying you and exactly what it is that bothers you. Because, Patty, at its center, when we have annoyance over behaviors, when we... Um, uh, 
get sick of being around someone, that is actually about us rather than the other person. Now, I'm not saying that their behavior is right. I'm not saying that it isn't rude or that it uh, isn't um, uh, aggravating for you. But what I'm saying is that it's aggra aggravating for you and not necessarily for someone else. So when we explore exactly what those behaviors are, we can really get at what it's all about for us, what is driving our annoyance, and what are um, the um, reasons behind our aggravation, and not just in a general sense, but in a specific sense. So Patty, I really want to encourage you, sit down and make a list. What is it that annoys you about your kids? So that you have that knowledge of the specifics. Now, the second thing I want to recommend for you, Patty, is I want to recommend that you do the same thing with your behavior. So are you doing things that your children find rude and annoying? Are your kids sick of being around you? Patty, I'm sorry to tell you if I'm the first one, but your kids may very well be sick of being around you. Now, I can't guarantee that, but I encourage you to explore this possibility and to ask yourself, gosh, are they maybe being sick? Are they maybe sick of being around me? And to make a list of those things that you may do that may make your kids sick of being around you. Because you know, Patty, when we have relationships, relationship, the key word in relationship is relate, right? It's how we relate to one another. And not only are you relating to your kids, but also your kids are relating to you. And so I think it's really important in this exploration, Patty, to consider how you are relating to your kids and how you are showing up for them, and whether or not you are exhibiting some of the very behaviors or behaviors that are creating the very feelings in them that you have towards them. So, Patty, this is a reciprocal kind of exploration. So, in addition to making a list and getting specific, about what annoys you about your kids so that you can get deeper into the reasons for that for yourself is to explore your own behaviors and what you may be doing that may very well be annoying your kids. Patty, are you not cleaning up? What are you doing maybe around the house that is not, quote, cleaning up? Are you complaining? If so, what are you complaining about? How are you complaining? By the way, you're complaining about your kids. Um, but <laughs> but um, exploring that, Patty, and asking yourself, gee, do I complain? And are you rude, Patty? Now you're probably thinking, of course I'm not rude, because guess what? We're all going to be thinking that. Well, I'm not rude. They're the rude ones. I'm not rude. But asking yourself, how am I being rude? Because, Patty, your children may very well be saying the same things about you. Who knows? Maybe next week I'll get a question from a teenager that says, my mom doesn't clean up. She complains and she's rude. I'm so sick of being around her. Mm-hmm. We hear that from teens a lot, children a lot, don't we? We probably, Patty, even would have said that about our own parents when we were teenagers. So my third recommendation for you, Patty, is to remember how you were as a teen. Remember yourself as a teenager. I don't know about you, but when I was a teenager, sometimes I was a real pain in the butt. 
Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes I am still a real pain in the butt and I'm 41 years old. So <laughs> we don't ever stop being pains in the butt, right? Remember, it's all about perception. And so while you may say, I'm not a pain in the butt, um, maybe your spouse says that, maybe your teenagers say that, your boss says that, your coworkers say that. I bet you can find someone somewhere who says that you're a pain in the butt at least sometimes. And so Patty, I wanna encourage you to envision yourself as you were as a teenager. Were you as a teenager ever rude? Did you ever complain? Did you ever not clean up? My guess is, Patty, that your parent or guardian or teacher, caretaker, may have at some point said the same thing about you. Being a teenager is hard. Actually, everyone, I think being a human being oftentimes is hard. Uh, I don't think that we do a, a, a good enough job, culturally speaking, of acknowledging all of the challenges that we face on a daily basis particularly with one another. You know, as human beings sharing this planet and sharing space and having all kinds of human feelings, it can be a challenge. And so we're always gonna have times when we are challenged to relate to one another and that maybe we don't like the ways in which certain human beings relate to us. But Remember, relate, relationship goes two ways, and so they may very well be feeling the same things about you. And being, as I was saying, a teenager is a challenge. So I want to encourage you, Patty, to acknowledge that. Your kids are finding their way in the world. You know, when we're teenagers, we are in such a, a, an interesting liminal space. Liminal meaning in between. We're not children anymore, but we're not yet adults. We are stretching ourselves, growing, finding our limits, exploring, coming into our own as human beings. And this exploration can chafe against the expectations of our caregivers, our parents, our teachers. And a lot of times we're just learning how to relate and how to move through the world and finding our own identity. Now, this is not, I want to say just by the way, everyone, this is not confined to the teenage years. This happens throughout our lives, um, including, you know, we have the saying, the midlife crisis. Well, guess what? The midlife crisis can occur at any time in your life. And uh, I think that even though this occurs throughout our lives, this identity seeking and stretching and learning who we are and maybe chafing against expectations. I think that this is really most apparent when we are teens because for the whole of our lives before we are teens and before we are pushing those boundaries and limits, we've been children who have been under the care of guardians and um, whose identity was much more solely focused on our relationship to that caregiver. And so I just think it is much more pronounced during our teenage years. What I am in effect saying here, Patty, is that I want to encourage you to be gentle with your teenagers. This is not an easy time for them. And I want to encourage you to acknowledge that and maybe cut them a little slack. Now that doesn't mean that you're gonna let them run rampant and spray paint your walls and go crazy. 
well, again, whatever crazy might mean, some parents might want their children spray painting their walls and to have some nice, interesting wall art, you know? So that could be appropriate. Um, but uh, really, Patty, to just remember yourself as a teen and remember how you were and how you were striving to express yourself. I don't know about you. I remember being a teenager and I remember criticisms and I remember questions and I, I remember people questioning my behaviors, my thoughts, my actions. And I remember parents and teachers and others, um, you know, uh, having these feelings uh, that maybe I was rude or complained or didn't clean up or et cetera, et cetera. And so I don't think, Patty, now, of course, I don't know your teenagers. I don't know their specific behaviors. My guess, though, is that they are probably pretty normal teenagers. My guess is that they are doing teenager kinds of things by pressing the boundaries, exploring, coming into their own as human beings. And I really believe that the best thing that we can do for our children at this time is to show them positive encouragement, love them, support them, allow them to grow and express themselves, allow them to push against those boundaries. Now, of course, within reason, I don't mean, Patty, that it's okay for them to go on a big crime spree or to put them or the, the, themselves or anyone else in danger, physical, emotional, mental danger, um, but just acknowledging, Patty, that this uh, their behaviors are probably a normal part of being a teenager. Probably, Patty, you exhibited some of these very same behaviors. Possibly, Patty, you are exhibiting some of these same behaviors right now. But to love and support them as they do this. Now, Patty, finally, I want to say that... Um, I really want to encourage you to set a positive example for your kids because they, they are, even though they are stretching and finding their limits and, um, you know, maybe finding the boundaries of just how rude they can be and just how much they complain and just how little they can clean up, you know, maybe they are pushing their limits on this to see what the boundaries are. I want to encourage you to be an example for them, to show them the limits, to not tell them the limits so much as show them. So rather than saying to them, pick up your damn socks from the floor. By the way, this is a thing that I do. I do put my socks on the floor. My socks are off right now and lying on the floor. And um, so uh, if I lived with someone else, they might say to me, Christian, pick up your damn socks off the floor. As a matter of fact, this is something that my mom used to say to my father frequently. Um, and something that as we were growing up, my sister frequently did. Um, I did not do it growing up, but now I do in my own home, Patty. So... <laughs> Um, so you, instead of saying to your kids, pick up your damn socks from the floor, I, I encourage you not to leave your socks on the floor. If you explore these behaviors that annoy you, and this is a behavior that really annoys you, to say, hmm, do I leave my socks on the floor? And then, Patty, to be picking up your socks from the floor. It's important for us, especially with children and teenagers, employees as well, bosses, to lead by example and to do the things that we want others to do. And so start there, Patty. This doesn't mean that you can't use some positive reinforcement with your children and to request, ask um, that they do pick up their socks from the floor. But first and foremost, I recommend that you lead by example. Pick up your socks. 
rather than um, speaking negatively? Can you maybe turn your speech into a more positive way of speaking? You know, you say they complain. Um, are you complaining? And if so, um, are there other ways that you can be expressing yourself that you can be an example for your kids? Are you rude, Patty? Are you exhibiting rude behaviors? And can you change that behavior to be more polite? Whatever that means to you. And so anytime we talk about changing other people's behavior, we always, always, always have to first and foremost look to change our own behavior. You know what, that famous quote that Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Yes, we need to start with our own behavior and we need to set an example with our behavior. Now, does this mean that your kids are just magically going to say, oh, look, mom's picking up her socks. I'm going to do the same. Not necessarily, but I really encourage you to start there because, Patty, really what is ineffective is to say to your kids, pick up your damn socks and your socks are lying all over the floor. So, Patty, please first pick up your literal and metaphorical socks. And it is only after you have been picking up your socks for some time that I would encourage you to acknowledge it with your young people. You could even, Patty, look at it in this way, in terms of, hey kids, I'm turning over a new leaf. From now on, I am picking up my socks. I recognize the importance of picking my socks up from the ground. This is something that has been a challenge for me and that I am going to uh, try to do. Kids, will you please help me in this and call on them to be an enforcer for you. As a matter of fact, this is a great tip for working with young people. Give them responsibility. Give them tasks to do. Give them leadership roles. Young people, teenagers especially, want direction and want to be helpful. You know, I don't believe that teenagers are lazy. I don't believe that, quote, kids these days are this, that, one thing, and the other, like don't clean up, complain, and are rude. I think that always older generations have said this about younger generations. Oh, kids these days. I'm sure, Patty, as I mentioned earlier, that your caregivers, your teachers said the same thing about you. Oh, kids these days. They don't clean up. They're rude. They complain. This is just a perennial belief that older generations have about younger generations. And I don't believe that teenagers are inherently lazy. I don't believe that they're inherently rude or that they um, inherently are dirty. <laughs> I think that we often have these kinds of beliefs about younger people. And we forget that we were once younger people and older people were saying the same exact things about us. But younger people want to be leaders. They want to be given jobs to do. They want responsibility. And so, Patty, I encourage you to give it to them. Help them. Ask them to help you to stay on track with these things that you want to do. Not being rude, not complaining, picking up socks. When you give someone responsibility over something, they have a tendency to take it a little bit more seriously. And while they are helping to enforce you picking up your socks, the chances are good that they will just automatically start picking up their own socks. Now, I can't guarantee that, but oftentimes that will be the case. And if that is not the case, you can always, Patty, go to them and say, hey, thank you so much, kids, for helping me to pick up my socks. 
This has been really rewarding and I've really appreciated your support in this. I'm also wondering if maybe you might be interested in engaging in this behavior with me and uh, partnering with me in this and picking up your socks too and how that might be for you. And so inviting them in to participate in this behavior with you. You know, that makes me think of something else, Patty. Um, I'm wondering if you engage in any activities with your young people, any common activities. Do you do things together? Do you have things in common? Do you maybe watch movies together, watch sports, go for a walk, um, ride bikes? I don't know, whatever it might be. Do you have anything that you engage in with your teenagers to help facilitate that bond and to help to connect and reconnect with them? And if the answer is no, you know, this doesn't need to be a big thing. Is it just a small thing like having a meal together, having a snack together, anything that you could maybe do and even do consistently, maybe set aside a specific amount of time where you can do something together. And it doesn't have to be big and elaborate and long, you know, like a game of Monopoly that lasts like a couple of hours, um, but maybe something small that lasts a few minutes that you can do together to help just form stronger bonds between you and to do this consistently in a small way and to um, keep building on that. Kind of like greasing the wheels, Patty. You know, sometimes in our relationships, our wheels haven't been greased. And when they haven't been greased, it can be a real struggle to get them moving again. They get stuck. And we feel like there's no hope for moving forward because those wheels are stuck. But all we need to do is give it a little grease and wiggle and a little grease and wiggle. Keep giving it a little grease. Eventually, those wheels will get moving again. And so, Patty, I want to encourage you to find the little ways that you can give your relationship with your kids a wiggle and the little things that you can do to help to improve your relationship with them. Patty, there is of course, as always with Ask the Stones, so much more to say. But what I would really like to do right now is to send some Reiki to your relationship with your kids. Now, I wanna send Reiki to the relationship um, rather than, of course, sending Reiki that your children are going to change and not be rude and not complain, I want to, of course, send Reiki to the relationship itself. And everyone listening, I would also like to send Reiki to your relationships. If there's a relationship that you have where you feel that the wheels are stuck and need a little grease, I would like to send some Reiki to you as maybe a little grease for those wheels. Again, as always, everyone, if you don't wish the Reiki to go to you, don't worry, it won't. But I would like to encourage you to take three deep cleansing breaths with me.
Patty, um, very clearly, I received the message um, to encourage your young people. So I really want to encourage you to find some positive things to say to them about themselves, about their actions, about their behaviors. So Patty, I understand that right now you feel really challenged to find any positivity because you're just sick of being around them. But I really want to encourage you to find something positive about your young people's behavior. And I want you to express that to them. So I really encourage you to give some praise to your young people and to find something. I know you're thinking, that's gonna be hard. These kids are rude. They don't complain. They don't clean up. Yes, okay. And what do they do that is positive in your opinion? What are some positive things that they are doing? And then please give that praise liberally. I think that too often we as human beings are too quick to criticize and that we are so very focused on what's going wrong and the criticisms and the judgments of one another. And I really want to encourage you to start greasing those wheels with some encouragement, with some positivity, with some praise, some compliments for your young people. So Patty, let's draw some cards and see what the angels have to say about this. Mm -hmm. Here is the angel deck. And let's see what the angels might have to say. You know, I again want to say, Patty, that I really do believe that um, this experience, well, first, it's not mm, particular to you. Second of all, it's not in, in terms of parenting and in terms of having teenagers. Second of all, it's not particular to teenagers and parenting. I really do think that we could substitute teens for all kinds of things. I mean, truthfully, don't we often hear these kinds of complaints about spouses and partners? So we have a card that has very clearly dropped out. This is Crystal from the Angel Deck. Have faith and hope because, because there is something positive and new on the horizon that you can't yet see. Hmm, that's an interesting card, Patty. I think the angels, what I'm getting is that the angels are actually saying that there is something positive in this situation. Believe it or not, there is something positive in this and something positive will come from it. So you are being called right now, encouraged right now, Patty, to find the positive in this situation negative experience, to find the positive in this relationship challenge with your young people and with parenting teens. Um, I'm also, Patty, going to pull a Breathe Easy card for you, as a maybe as a mantra for you and something to think about. You know, as I shuffle this deck to Patty, I also want to encourage you to breathe uh, breathe easy had me thinking of this. As, as you may know or not know, I am a big proponent of the breath and that really the breath is the way to bring us to the present moment, to help calm and center us and to uh, help us to bring awareness to situations. The breath is just so powerful. And I think it is actually underestimated. And I think one of the reasons it's so underestimated is because we do it all the time without even thinking. So I really want to encourage you, Patty, that when you feel these feelings of being sick around your teenagers, <sighs> breathe, 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 breathe. Deep in breath, deep out breath. 
deep out breath, long out breath, whatever, you know what I mean, Patty. Take some good breaths. Mmm. I am whole. We are all connected in the unbroken circle of life. <sighs> I breathe in the feeling of love and wholeness that starts in my heart and radiates out to the world. I am filled with an unbroken connection to all there is. I breathe out my broken heart. Oh, Patty, yes, this can, in a sense, feel heartbreaking, can't it? You have these children that I know you love dearly, and your relationship with them right now is strained. I encourage you, Patty, to focus on that connection that you have with your children. You know, I don't know, Patty, maybe these are your birth children, maybe not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you still have a connection with them. At the very least, a heart connection, if not a DNA connection. And so, Patty, I really want to encourage you to focus in on that connection. I really want to encourage you to focus in on the wholeness rather than on the brokenness. To focus in on the positive rather than the negative. To focus in on the things that your young people are doing right rather than on the things that they are doing wrong. I encourage you to focus on love and to send that love out to your young people, to radiate that love out towards them, and to express that to them. My guess, I don't know this, Patty, my guess is that your kids would really love to hear that from you. Words like, I love you, I'm proud of you, you're doing a good job, Maybe you don't pick up your socks from the floor. Don't, you know, don't focus on the negative there, Patty. But, you know, maybe they don't pick their socks up on the floor, but what are they doing right? So, Patty, what I'm saying is I might not encourage you to say, you know, you don't pick your socks up from the floor, but <laughs> just start with what comes after the but because that's really what your young people, our young people, need from us. And that's really what we all need from one another. Let's lead with the heart. Let's lead with the positive. Let's lead with love and wholeness and connection rather than the broken parts. So Patty, thank you so much for this question. Well, I guess it wasn't so much a question, Patty, as it was just a statement. So thank you for this statement, Patty, and thank you for the honor of addressing this challenge that is a very common challenge of parenting and of just being a human being. So, so many thanks to you, Patty, and so many thanks to all of you for listening. It is, as always, my honor and pleasure to come to you each week to offer encouragement for life's changes, challenges, and transitions. As always, I am Christian of Standing Stones Healing Company, encouraging your journey with Reiki, card reading, and coaching. Thank you, and best wishes for your journey. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ask the Stones. If you have a question for Ask the Stones, please send me an email at christian at standingstoneshealing.com or connect with me on Facebook at Standing Stones Healing. Thank you and best wishes for your journey.